Nigeria's elusive search for nationhood. If anyone was under any illusion of Nigeria's nation state status, the Muhammad Buhari administration in its six years so far must have helped to cure that illusion, even if in the most unfortunate of circumstances. It is not that Nigerians ever had a consensus about the idea of Nigeria as a geographical space where the potentials of each member of the diverse nationalities comprised within it can thrive as members of a common national destiny. Not at all. Even in its infancy, the young Nigeria was described as no more than a geographical expression by one of her founding fathers. What the Buhari regime has come to make us realize is how divided we are, having done a bad job of mismanaging or managing our diversity in the last six years. Some critics have had to argue that at no other time was Nigeria so divided in her history than now. And you couldn't help but agree with them. I was moved to deep reflection recently against the backdrop of all the depressing news in the country. And I couldn't help but come to the conviction that Nigeria might just be battling a crisis of nationhood, a situation which reinforces the convictions of separatist agitators who would rather the divergent nationalities constituted in Nigeria go their separate ways. The North-South divide has grown so wide in recent months owing to inability of leaders and followers to reach a consensus on critical national debates, such as system of animal husbandry, power rotation, freedom of speech, ETC. The alleged entitlement mentality of the North and the seemingly marginalization of the South, of the South particularly the Southeast, has created a sense of exclusion whereby some people are seen as less Nigerian than the others. One of the unintended consequences of this social disequilibrium is the emergence of the we versus them mentality, where truth and objectivity is now a function of group and tribal solidarity. Amidst the bedlam over the suspension of Twitter, I noticed with concern the conspiratorial silence of the North and her so-called intelligentsia, while the South was agog with condemnation of it. On the other hand, I also observed the rearrest of Mazi Namdekanu and the raid on Sunday Ibohu's residence were hailed by the North, while the South expectedly rose in condemnation of sin. One question that has emerged from all of this is, how do we build a nation? Perhaps another way to phrase the question might as well be, are we supposed to be a nation? For if after 60 years of independence, the two distinct protectorates that became the country Nigeria as we know it today are unable to achieve a pan-consensus on critical and basic issues of nationhood, then it may not be out of place to take a second look at this colonial experiment. It has also been suggested in some quarters that since the clannish nature of President Muhammad Buhari is largely responsible for this level of division in the land, working towards a post-Buhari era should be the collective preoccupation of all and sundry. But whether that would not amount to kicking the proverbial can down the road is another thing altogether. I, I don't know if it's be discouraging to say that I do not know what it would take for us to actually be a nation. I'm not of the school of thought that there should be a separation, okay? Because I'm not exactly sure what purpose it would serve. Um, whether or not we like it, um, all the regions in this country have benefited one thing or the other from the other regions. However, it's a real thing, right? People are genuinely concerned about their place in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Genuinely so. Um, I, I, I grew up in, in the South, in the, in the South South. I'm from the Southeast. But I was never aware of my tribe until I moved to the Southwest. And this is still the South. So that makes you a bit concerned because the first thing you see is you see, you see my tribe before you see me. Yes. Before you see what I have to offer. Before you see the value I bring to anything. And that's the same sentiment across all the different tribes of the country. And so now all these things that are happening is when something happens that is against the sovereignty of the nation or you know, a national problem, people are not looking at the problem. People are looking at who did it. Exactly. If some boys were caught doing drugs, the first thing people are looking at, what tribe? Where is it from? 
Where's it from? So we're so divided as a nation that I really don't know how we're going to get past it. I don't know how. I think honestly that for, like you said, for as long as I've known, as long as I've lived, we've always been about tribe. Yeah. I'm not sure that we have ever truly been without, you know, without our tribes at the back of our minds. Yeah. I remember that you know, I always knew I was Yoruba. I knew that, okay, and even within being a Yoruba person, there were times you were told, oh, you can't marry from this tribe. Oh, you, I mean, you can't marry from this part of this tribe. Imagine that kind of <laughs> issue. So I will now go to the bigger picture of Nigeria, and then you're told, oh, you can't marry someone from that part of Nigeria or someone from that part of tribe, Nigeria. It's called, it behaves like this. Or situations where you actually hear, we know when we're growing up, we used to have all those funny things where they would say, oh, these people eat food and they don't drink water. Or these people okay. use their feet to kick their parents. Or those other words. You know, so many snide remarks that we grew up with, literally speaking. Mm -hmm. And so that begs the question, did we really have a nation? And then there was something that was said that, that you said about the experiment, the social experiment yeah, by our colonial masters. Masters. I don't know whether it's time to start advocating for separation. I don't know whether it's time to advocate for whatever it is that we're advocating for. But one thing that I do know is that as human beings, we cannot do without one another. Yeah. So whether we're going into different nations or we're staying together, we have to come into a system of governance that's going to be profitable for us, that's going to make sense so that people can have a sense of identity. Sure. And like Uche rightly said, a lot of young people don't know what it means to be called Nigerian again. They don't know what it means to have a sense of nationhood. Yes. And indeed, maybe we are just throwing the proverbial can down, down the, the road. road. And I don't know what it is. It's certainly sometimes a depressing topic. I, I totally agree with both of you. Let me just um, um, bring the governance and leadership dimension to the debate. Because I, 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 I found out that the Buhari government has to a large extent helped to um, fund the embers of the division that we are witnessing today. I know Nigeria has not been, well, we've not been that united, but yeah. the deliberate steps of this government has to a large extent um, um, forced that sense of exclusion, whereby some persons mm. are now, okay, I don't understand what is going on here. I wish a part of this, um, yeah. uh, this country. So since we understand that how elusive this can be, what it means is that it even takes more deliberate leadership steps from people who elect into power. True. Who will be yeah. conscious of the, um, the pluralistic nature of the Nigerian society mm -hmm. and try, as much of a fact, the framers of the constitution, they were not fools when they enacted section 14, subsection 2A, mm. that this would be federal character. They, it was in the consciousness of the nature yes, of the of country. Yes, of that unification. Whereby, for there to be that sense of nationhood, nationhood every person unity. should be should be seen to be involved in the process. Seen to be yes. in the operative world. Yes, because when that is not the case, pretty much every other thing crumbles because everything has to rest on, there has to be a nation before mm -hmm. any other thing can happen. So it might be building rate far from here to wherever. When the people in the country are mm. not actually happy being in it. Mm -hmm. but, but do you know, do you think that the whole concept of federal character has actually helped with regards to the development of our nation? Well, I, I'll answer in this way. People have argued that should we do federal character for the sake of it? But my response is, we can actually get meritocracy within, within the, the, federal. The, the framework of federal character principle. You know, so recent, interesting that we're having this conversation, and I just remembered something that was said now. I mean, I, I was on my status before this conversation occurred, there was a person that was talking about the issue of Nigeria and how, okay, so when you're, you'll get quali you're qualified, you have a degree, you have your master's and everything, yes. as a person from any part of Nigeria, are you going to apply for a job? Yes. Are you told, oh, sorry, maybe you need to go and get some other things, mm -hmm. while somebody else who's from the, uh, from maybe from the northern region yeah. of Nigeria goes there, and the person yes, is yes. like, oh, whatever qualification, oh, come in and then gets the job, mm -hmm. makes money from the job, and then is able to further push to further their education. But the point that the person made, which was very unusual, yes. was actually a call to the southern part of Nigeria that in other in the northern part of Nigeria you find that 
people it's literally like a communal sense of of of, of um engagement okay. and the person was pushing for the fact that i mean totally away from governance and nationhood but i it struck me because one thing i have seen like i said when i started was that even within us uh, within uh, within Nigeria and within mm. the different tribes, we have those mm. things. That yeah. how many of us actually really truly like you know build each other or pull each other okay. up? How okay. about that sense of okay. communalism? Okay. Now this is talking about federal character and meritocracy yes. Yes. because you find that one of the things that happened was that in the federal character system, we're a part of Nigeria, and I'm very careful not to do the north south divide because <laughs> I literally avoid those kind of conversations, Conversation. but we do know what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where the standards for the for meritocracy were not achievable, they literally just pulled themselves up. Yeah. Yes. And so in pulling themselves up and giving them a, giving themselves a leg up, yes. they're able to finally bridge the they gap. They have that edge. Yes. You know, you see, what they've done is, one thing I have discovered is that we may not realize it, but it's, you know, there's something about strategy. So even if they came in from this level of understanding mm -hmm. or my educational qualification was just school cert. Yes. Within 15 to 20 years, yes. that yes. same person who entered the system with school cert mm -hmm. actually goes to school yes. and gets to the highest level of their education yes. and becomes competent. Yes. Well, maybe we started with the fact that, okay, I've gotten my master's degree, mm -hmm. I've gotten, a, I mean, I have a PhD yes. and all that. But so maybe, just maybe, mm -hmm. the federal character, because right now we don't have anything that is saying that anything is changing. So because we have to find find a solution in the system we're in. Maybe we start to clamor for the fact that on my simple, very simple, non-governance ask, say, how about we start to look at how do we actually build ourselves with the marginalized, supposed <laughs> marginalized <laughs> people? So you need, for that to happen, there has to be a complete change of mindset. Fantastic. You have to understand that, you know, let's use the regions. The Southeast already believes that they are marginalized yeah. from the top to the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. And so what they do, and, and, and I suppose every region, is to say, okay, do you know what? Where is the space that is my own, that I can own? Mm -hmm. And so they'll focus on trade and commerce, right? Mm -hmm. And will not go after those opportunities that you speak about. Fantastic. So yeah. that bringing up is not going to happen. They would say, mm. listen, that door has been closed to you by virtue of the way the country has been run mm -hmm. for years. So why are you wasting your time? Hmm. So go focus on your focus where you know that you're have going to, edge. you have an edge. Mm -hmm. So there's a complete mindset reorientation mm -hmm. that true. needs to happen, right? I, I'm a South, like I said, I'm a South Easterner and I, I've lived in and worked in Lagos for a very long time. I'm always the, probably the only South Easterner at, in a room. Mm -hmm. Many times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they're like, those doors have been closed to us, mm. unfortunately, yeah. mentally. Yeah. So we need to start to re-educate people. And the only way people can believe it is if at the leadership top, you talked about governance and yes. leadership, yeah. there is actually a demonstration yes. that we are trying to create an inclusive um, environment System. for everyone. Yeah. People will tell you, look at all the heads of the, you know, parastatals yeah. in mm -hmm. Nigeria. Mm -hmm. They all come from one part That's of the, the country. country. Mm -hmm. So that tells you something. So people mm -hmm. are like, aha. Mm -hmm. So how do you believe that there's going to be a chance for me. Mm, exactly. So exactly. when we are voting next time, yes. right, we need to be careful how we vote. Very we true. need to be strategic. We need to be looking at leaders that have demonstrated yeah. that they truly, truly understand the whole concept of federalism. federalism. Yeah. Yeah. What is, you know, what is a nation? It's a yeah. group of people, you know, gathered together yeah. for one common vision. And what is the vision of Nigeria? I don't know it. That's you it. Know it. That's it. How many of us know it, actually? <laughs> I mean, how many of us really know it? And maybe that really is the question now. What our foundations what are might be fault? What are we working towards? Because mm -hmm. if the three of us believe are working towards one goal that benefits all of us, mm -hmm. it won't matter okay. where we're from. <laughs> well, I guess this conversation will not end. Yeah, and yes, still yes, continue yes, going yes, on. certainly. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy that she ended with that note of leadership. And as we approach the 2023 election, I hope Nigerians should have that focus in mind of electing a leader who will have that sense of inclusion for We hope so too. And sundry. We truly hope That's so. That's our prayer. On last week's episode, Milo Moore says, education and inclusion is everything. Thanks for the report. Antonia Alebiosu says, this is quite insightful. Follow us on social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, Hashtag the advocates ng or on Instagram plus TV Africa. Hashtag the advocates ng. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plus TV Africa.com forward slash the advocates ng. Anytime is next after the break. Do stay with us. <laughs>